Constanza Manzarli was born April 14, 1920 in Innsbruck, Austria, to a Greek father and an Austrian mother. After her completion of primary school, despite her dream of becoming a teacher, she would attend housekeeping school. She would get a job at Dr. Zabel Sanatorium. While working there in July of 1944, she'd get an offer to be the dietitian and chef for Adolf Hitler. At first, she was unsure if she wanted to take the position, but ultimately accepted and started working in September of 1944. She would cook for Hitler while he was at the Wolf's Den, Eagle's Nest, and later the Fuhrer Bunker. Hitler thought very highly of Constanza, saying, I have a cook with the Mozart name, and allowing her to dine with him and share tea during the day. She was an exceptional baker making sweets that Hitler loved. But it would all start plunging into chaos when World War II was reaching the end and the Soviets were in Berlin. On April 22nd of 1945, Constanza, Gerda Christian, Gertrude Junge would be relieved of their duties and told to fly out of Berlin immediately. All the women refused. They preferred to stay with Hitler. All of a sudden, the door was opened. Hitler came out. He said with a very, very uh, grave face, everything is lost. Pack your things and go. You have to leave in, in, in within an hour. The last plane will bring you out of Berlin. He didn't look at us, actually. Then, after a moment of silence, Eva Brown stepped forward, went to him, took his hand and said, but you know I stay with you. I wouldn't go. And he smiled, and he tried to smile, and he kissed her on the lips. And somehow, in this moment, it was just following Eva Brown, we said, we all said, we, stay, we are staying too. And then he, he was sort of relieved, I would say, and he said, I wish my generals would be as brave as you are. Constanza would be given a cyanide capsule to take in the event of capture, which was very common for the Germans due to the torture they were potentially facing if they were captured by the Soviets. And I would never risk to get captured alive, because he knew what happened to Mussolini, he saw the pictures, and he, he was very, very frightened to have the same fate if he would be captured. And soon after that, capture became a very real possibility for her. Constanza would be one of the last people to see Adolf Hitler alive and would cook him his last meal. Deutsche Männer und Frauen, Soldaten der deutschen Wehrmacht, unser Führer Adolf Hitler ist gefallen. In tiefster Trauer und Ehrfurcht verneigt sich das deutsche Volk. Frühzeitig hatte er die furchtbare Gefahr des Bolschewismus erkannt und diesem Ringen sein Dasein geweiht. Am Ende dieses seines Kampfes und seines unbeirrbaren, geraden Lebensweges steht sein Heldentod in der Hauptstadt des Deutschen Reiches. Sein Leben war ein einziger Dienst für Deutschland. Sein Einsatz im Kampf gegen die bolschewistische Sturmflut galt darüber hinaus Europa und der gesamten Kulturwelt. Der Führer hat mich zu seinem Nachfolger bestimmt. Im Bewusstsein der Verantwortung übernehme ich die Führung des deutschen Volkes in dieser schicksalsschweren Stunde. Meine erste Aufgabe ist es, deutsche Menschen vor der Vernichtung durch den vordrängenden bolschewistischen Feind zu retten. Nur für dieses Ziel geht der militärische Kampf weiter. Soweit und solange die Erreichung dieses Zieles durch die Briten und Amerikaner behindert wird, werden wir uns auch gegen sie weiter verteidigen und weiter kämpfen müssen. Die Angloamerikaner setzen dann den Krieg nicht mehr für ihre eigenen Völker, sondern allein für die Ausbreitung des Bolschewismus in Europa fort. Was das deutsche Volk in dem Ringen dieses Krieges kämpfen vollbracht, und in der Heimat ertragen hat, ist geschichtlich einmalig. 
In der kommenden Notzeit unseres Volkes werde ich bestrebt sein, unseren tapferen Frauen, Männern und Kindern, soweit dies in meiner Macht steht, erträgliche Lebensbedingungen zu schaffen. Zu all dem brauche ich eure Hilfe. Schenkt mir euer Vertrauen, denn euer Weg ist auch mein Weg. Haltet Ordnung und Disziplin in Stadt und Land aufrecht. Tu jeder an seiner Stelle seine Pflicht. Nur so werden wir die Leiden, die die kommende Zeit jedem Einzelnen von uns bringen wird, mildern und den Zusammenbruch verhindern können. Wenn wir tun, was in unseren Kräften steht, wird auch der Herrgott nach so viel Leid und Opfer uns nicht verlassen. After the death of Adolf Hitler, General Monke and a colonel would begin discussing how to safely remove the reigning people from the bunker. General Monke's group would be Ambassador Hewell, Vice Admiral Voss, Goethe Christian, Gertrude Junge, Constanza, and Elsa Kruger. Constanza would lead the bunker on May 1, 1945, escorted by the SS Brigade Führer Wilhelm Monke, going to a German holdout area. They would make it to the Schultheis Patzenhofer Brewery, where the Germans were still holding off the Soviet advance. In Junge's book, Until the Final Hour, she would recall the trip from the Führer bunker to the brewery. For hours, we crawled through cavernous cellars, burning buildings, strange, dark streets. Somewhere in an abandoned cellar, we rest and sleep for a couple of hours. Then we go on. Until Russian tanks bar our way. None of us has a heavy weapon. We are carrying nothing but pistols. So the night passes, and in the morning it is quiet. The gunfire has stopped. We still haven't seen any Russian soldiers. Finally we end up in the old beer cellar of a brewery now being used as a bunker. This is our last stop. There are Russian tanks out here, and it's full daylight. We still get into the bunker unseen. At the time, the Germans were still holding off the Soviets at the brewery. That was until the very next day. The protection brigade would be captured, leaving Constanza and the others in the basement. The brigade leader in the basement would task the three women with delivering a message to Admiral Karl Donitz, Hitler's successor, knowing the men wouldn't make it past the Soviet troops, but the woman might make it unnoticed. Junge would continue in her book saying the following. A general comes into the bunker, finds the defending commander Monke and speaks to him. We discover that we are in the last bastion of resistance in the capital of the Reich. The Russians have now surrounded the brewery and are calling on everyone to surrender. Monke writes a last report. There is still an hour to go. The rest of us sit there smoking. Suddenly he raises his head, looks at us women and says, You must help us now. We're all wearing uniform, none of us will get out of here. But you can try to get through, make your way to Dönitz and give him this last report. Constanza would leave the brewery to find civilian clothing, because she was wearing a military jacket asking Junge to wait for her. The timeline is convoluted due to the time spread of everyone involved giving their story at different times. But the mystery starts when Dr. Schneck got word when General Ziegler was hit in an artillery strike that Constanza was also killed in this strike. But Gerda Christian would confirm she didn't die in that strike because she was with her after that. While in the breakout, Gerda Christian believed Constanza would disappear after gunshots broke out. But Yunge would confirm she didn't disappear after this because Constanza had made it into the brewery and she last saw Constanza in the custody of two Soviet soldiers. This is what they would say. Dr. Schneck would say, I lost sight and contact with Fräulein Manzarli. Hitler's cook had gone along without a murmur up until this point. We pulled ourselves together in the dark and she was among those missing. Somebody came up and told me she had been hit and killed. Gerda Christian would say, some time after the General Ziegler incident, I caught up with Constanze Manziali. 
We were plodding along the Sama side of the street, I believe it was the Invalidenstraße, just before we reached the Stettiner Bahnhof. Suddenly we heard straffing fire ahead. As usual on such occasions, we quickly broke for available cover. I remember hiding under a low balcony. Isa Fraulein Manziali, who was just in front of me on the same side of the street, disappeared through a gaping hole in a brick wall. A few minutes later, I went up to look for her and I called out, not too loudly, perhaps. No answer. She had vanished. We never saw her again. But I heard no nearby shot, no scream, saw no one else about. I had the hunch she might just have taken off on her own. And Yunge would say that she saw Constanza heading towards a U-Bahn tunnel flanked by two Soviet soldiers, where she would tell Yunge, they just want to see my papers. The leading theory is that she died shortly after departing with the others. Whether she could see the end coming and took the cyanide before the Soviets captured her or the Soviets killed her. Constanza couldn't have been trying to show the Soviets her papers, as Junge would note in her book before leaving the bunker, they had destroyed all their documents. We have all destroyed our papers. I take no money with me, no provisions, no clothes, just a great many cigarettes and a few pictures I can't part with. The other women pack small bags. Unless she took the cyanide immediately when she realized she was going to be captured, it's unlikely she died at her own hands. The two Soviets killing her after entering the tunnel is a very real possibility. In the book, The Bunker, The History of the Reich Chancellery Group, James P. O'Donnell theorizes that it was possible that Constanza could have made it out and lived out her life, saying the following. The only valid reason for assuming today that Constanza Manzioli was killed in the breakout is that she has not since surfaced. As a simple cook and quite harmless soul, the lady had no reason to fear criminal charges. As an Austrian citizen, moreover, she would have enjoyed liberated status, one of the quainter juridical twists of the year 1945. Why, after all, keep trudging on with soldiers, SS soldiers in the bargain, when she could quietly fade into the anonymous mass of civilians? This theory is possible if she had disappeared during the breakout, but Goethe Christian's recollection conflicts with Jungay's. If Constanza had been last seen with two Soviet soldiers, as Yunge recalls, just disappearing would have been so simple. 